What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Who should be Barcelona's future striker? The reason why I'm asking this question is because Fabrizio Romano said today that Barca are keeping close tabs on the striker market. And the second I saw that tweet, so many players instantly came to my head. So many guys that I can see wearing Barca's number nine for hopefully the next 10 to 15 years because in my opinion, European football right now, there's a plethora of young, up and coming talented strikers. So today I wanna to name you guys some players that I wanna see Barca hopefully go after in this up and coming summer transfer window or in the future. And if I don't name a player you guys wanna see Barca go after or a striker, I should say that Barca should go after. If I don't name them in this video, you guys can let me know in the comments section down below. We can have a good discussion down there. Before we actually start naming players, I wanna say this. Obviously, as I predicted, not the two by one horn, but as I predicted, Robert Lewandowski has been one of the best players in European football so far this season. Not one of the best, actually, he's been one of the most informed strikers, I should say, in European football so far this season. Again, as I predicted before the season started, I never once doubted you, Lewa, and you know that. Uh, and, you know, a guy who seemed to have found a second gear under Hansi Flick. But no matter how good Lewa has been, again, as I predicted that he, he was, he was going to be, he's older now. I mean, and we knew that when we signed Lewa, he was always going to be a short-term fix. He was never going to be a long-term striker for us because, again, when we signed him, he was like 33. He's now, I think, 35 or 36. So, again, Lewa has maximum, maybe, in my opinion, two great years left in him this year, hopefully, and then one more year if we're lucky. So, again, you have to look for the long-term because Barca have such, a, have such a young squad already. You always have to think about the future and who you can sign to you know, be here for the next 10 years with Lamin Jamal and Fermin and Gabi and Pedri because all these guys are super young. So, again, you have to think long-term, and Lewa is not that option. So, Lewa, no matter how good he's been, again, as I predicted, He's not the long-term replacement. The guy who, the option, sorry, and the guy who we thought was going to be Lewa's long-term replacement and Vitor Roque, that ship unfortunately has sailed. I've given up on Vitor Roque being Barca's number nine for the future. No matter how, no matter how badly I wanted that to work, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. The whole situation has been so toxic. I don't see Roque coming back to Barca after Betis and actually being a, a contributor for us because Chavi didn't want him. Hasi Flick didn't want him. So Roque, it's done. He's not going to be, uh, he's not going to replace Lewa. So Roque, not going to happen. Lewa, uh, obviously too old to be the future striker. So that means that Barca have to look in the market. We have to look hours. We have to spend some money and bring somebody in. And obviously, when we're talking about Barca and signing players, especially the players that I'm about to name in this video, it's always like people make fun of us because we're always naming these players that cost like 60 or 70 million or 80 million. And everybody's like, Barca's so broke. They're not going to afford any of these guys. You know, the, the Barca can't afford any of these players. And, you know, part of like, those people, it pisses me off because they, they are actually right because we know that Barca's financial situation is still not even close to perfect. The one-on-one, -on -one, we're still not back to that no matter how much you want to the promise. We're not back to the one-on-one. -on -one. The Nike deal still not been resolved. And we saw that, we saw like that affected us this summer, man. Like the Nico Williams thing, it got, it, it went sideways because of the whole financial situation. We couldn't register him. We couldn't guarantee that we could register him. Obviously for the first game of La Liga, he said, I'm not going to go to Barca. It's just not. It's not, not right now, maybe in the future, if you guys get that sorted out. So again, Nico Williams, that kind of, the financial situation kind of made him steer away from Barca. We know that Dani Olmo, we signed him for 60 million, but we needed Christensen to get her to register him. That's the only reason why he was registered for the, for, for like the game against Adel Wallecano. So again, these, these situ that's still a dark cloud that hangs over Barca's head. The financial situation is still very real. And again, Barca, we're, we're like kind of talking about these guys, like, like as a Barca fan, it's kind of like going to a Ferrari dealership as a homeless person. It's like, you can look, but can you really buy anything? No. You can't really buy shit. You're just looking and you're hoping that one day you can buy them. But the difference is a homeless guy can't sell anything to buy a Ferrari. You know, maybe he has like some fucking hidden gem or something. But again, if he doesn't have that, he's fucked. He's going to live on the street for the rest of his life. Tough luck, man. I'm sorry. But Barcelona, you can sell players and bring somebody. You can obviously help. Like, in, in, like as time goes by, the financial situation keeps getting better. So again, I think by next summer, Barca is going to be in a lot better spot. And again, you can always sell players to bring somebody in. You can sell a Frankie Young. You can hopefully one day, oh my God, I can dream. You can hopefully one day sell Ferran Torres. Maybe you saw Roque when he comes back from loan uh, on loan from Betis. Someone gives you a good uh, price for him. You know, you can sell a guy like, I don't know, um, trying to think Ter Stegen in the future when he comes back from injury. You can sell Araujo. I, no, I don't want that to happen. But you can, you know, there's a lot of players you can, you can get a, a good amount of money for because Barca have a, a very young, talented squad. So again, if you do want a striker this summer, you can make that happen by selling players and obviously like bending the books a little bit, you know, not in a, not in a illegal way. I'm just saying like, you know, they can figure something out. So again, it can happen. I'm not, it's not a pipe dream. It can actually happen, but it's still, like, we're still talking, we're still talking about Barcelona here. So the player, I'm not about to name guys that are like shitty strikers who maybe Barca can maybe like get like for 30 million. No, we're naming the best of the best because Barcelona is the best club in, in the world. So we're only going for the creme de la creme. So I'm going to name you three players that I think Barca could go after that are, that are more realistic options. And then one guy that's kind of like a, like if it happens, I'll cream my pants live on, like on camera. Like that's, that's going to be like a, that's like a, that's, that's like a dream. But the three guys that I'm about to name right now. Uh, guys that I believe that are good enough, you know, for Barca and that, you know, yes, they cost a lot of money, but I think Barca can make it happen. My least preferred option for Barca at number three of the three guys that are the realistic options is Sasco. 
Benjamin Sesco obviously at RB Leipzig. He's still a raw talent. He's really, really good. He's 6'5". He's physical. And he's not a target man. Despite his height, you, you would think he's just like a guy who camps in the box. He's not that. He's very, very good at dribbling. He's good on the ball. His decision making in the final third when it comes to playmaking is a little bit questionable still. Because again, he's still very raw. He's 20 years old. But he is a really, really good player. But I just... I don't know, man. Like, it just it doesn't convince me 100%. I think Sesco is really, really good, but it doesn't convince me 100% because I think there's some, uh, he's still very limited. He still has some limitations to his game, I should say. So, again, while he is a good, promising young player and Arsenal actually wanted him this summer, uh, it's still, like, to me, he wouldn't be my number one choice. If Barca could just could sign anybody, it wouldn't be my number one choice. I think Sesco has a 60 million release cost, if I'm not mistaken, but I think he can negotiate with Leipzig this summer and it's not up to 80. So, if Barca want to pay his release cost, it's 80 million, which, again, is a lot of money, but, you know, Barca bring him in, I wouldn't be upset. He's one of my targets that I think Barca should go after, but he's not the number one target. My number two target would be Gyokeres. It would be Gyokeres, uh, Victor Gyokeres. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, by the way, but it would be Gyokeres from Sporting, a guy who is amazing, a really, really good player. Obviously, he plays in the Portuguese league, so there's that, like, you have to keep that in mind because it's not a, it's not the best league per se, but this guy's been scoring goals for fun. Again, he's tall. He's 6'2". Uh, a guy who, you know, again, by his frame, you would think he's a target man, but he's far from that. He's built like a tank, by the way. He's a lot bigger, like more built than than, than Sesco. Not as tall, but he's like more, he's stockier. And again, by his build, you would think this guy's a target man, but he's not that. He's so, he's so flexible, bro. I mean, he's so, his dexterity is insane. This guy moves like a number 10. Honestly, like he can, the way he manipulates his body to get in and out of tight spaces, the run he makes him behind, his positioning is really, really good. This guy's a, a really well-rounded striker, in my opinion. What I've seen from him and what people have told me from him, he's a very well-rounded striker who can score goals for fun. And a guy who I think would fit really well with the Barca side. So again, to me, I think Jokeres is an option for Barca. Is he my number one choice? No, I think for most Barca fans, he, that's their number one choice. But to me, it's not Jokeres because again, Portuguese league is still a thing that, that kind of... In my mind, I'm like, ah, uh, Joao Felix, you know, do I, is that is that going to be like Joao Felix 2.0? He comes over from Benfica, you know, Joao Felix, obviously, and, and, and he goes to Atletico and it's not very good. This guy comes over from Sporting and it, he ends up being a flop. From what I've seen of him, again, his dexterity, his flexibility, his ability to actually like move like a like a 5'7 guy when he's 6'2 is really, really impressive. And again, his goal scoring is there and his finishing is there. That's why he scored so many goals last season. He's also a really good playmaker. He can assist the ball as well, not just a one-dimensional striker. So Gilkeres is my number two. My number one out of the three realistic options that I want to see Barca go after. You know, people are talking about John Duran and, and, and Undev. I saw someone call, say Undev or uh, Etequite from, from fucking uh, Frankfurt. This is Barcelona, guys. John Duran, I think he's going to be a really good player in the future. I'm not saying he's bad, but again, guys, this is Barcelona. You go for the best of the best. You go for the best of the best. And no disrespect to those guys, but do they, like they're not going to excite me as much as this guy. And this guy that I want to say is Isak. Alexander Isak, who plays for Newcastle. Why watch Player Real Sociedad? I thought he was amazing. And when Newcastle signed him, I, I was like, this guy's going to work for them. I didn't say it in a video, but trust me, I'm not making this up. I will never lie to you guys. Have I lied to you guys in this video? Never. You know, I never, I, not even in this, I haven't lied to you guys in this video, so I will never lie to you. The Lewandowski thing was true, by the way. You guys know that the Lewandowski thing was true. If you watch my channel, you know I never doubted him. But anyway, Isak, man, what he's done for Newcastle, I mean, this is a, he's a generational talent, in my opinion. He's a generational talent. He's one of the best strikers of the ball in Europe. And honestly, you could argue he's top three. When it comes to finishing, he's as good as they come. On the ball, he's fantastic. His positioning is very, very good. He's, he's very positionally aware. He knows where his teammates are and, and how they can get him the ball and where to position himself so they can get him the ball. This guy's fantastic, man. If you guys are not, if you guys are not Premier League fans, watch Isak. And the reason why I put him above Gilkert is because, again, keep in mind, they're both around the same age. I think, actually, Isak is younger than Gilkert. Everybody's talking about Gilkert because he's probably going to be cheaper. They're around the same age. Now, Isak is going to cost a fuck ton of money Barca can get him. But again, we're talking about, you know, in the future. Isak, man, he's 25. And this guy is, he's insane. If he, if he would have stayed healthy last year, he would have scored over 30 goals. Again, his, his, his injury history is not great, but he's amazing. He's a great player. If you guys have not watched Alexander Isak at, at Newcastle, watch him. Watch more of him because he's a joy to watch. Truly, I believe he's a generational talent. I truly believe he is. A fantastic player. If Barca can get Isak, oh my god, he would fit so well with this team because he is a great player. Again, all these guys that I'm mentioning, they're not target men. They're big, but they're not target men. I think big. I think Barca need a big striker. I think Barca need a guy who that's like like all these guys are six four. I think Gilkeres is six two, Isak is six four, Sesco six five. They're all big, but again, they're not one dimensional. They're not target men. They're not. It's not fucking. This is not Andy Carroll you're talking about or Peter Cross. So you just camp in the box. Okay, these are guys who who have a lot of facets to this game, and on top of that, they're they're big and powerful and strong and tall, which is great for me because I think Barca with the squad that we have with Fermin and Gabi and Pedri and uh, and Rafinha and I mean a guy like that would thrive in that system. 
So again, for me, from from like out of the realistic options, from from three to to, to one, it would be Sesco from Leipzig at, at three. Again, he's a little bit raw in the, and plays in the German league, so I'm not as convinced with him. But I think he would be good. Number two is Gilcares. The only thing with him is that he plays in in, in the Portuguese league, and I have some some uh, skepticism uh, skepticisms about that. And then number one for me would be Alexander Isak because he's proven it in the Premier League, he's proven it in La Liga, and he's a guy who I believe is so talented that if he came to Barca, it'd be huge. But again, those are like the three realistic options per se. The one kind of pipe dream is, of course, Erling Braut Holland, who's currently playing for Man City, a treble winner, a guy who finished second in ball and door voting already, has been probably the best player, apart from Lamin Jamal, in European football so far this season. Um, Holland would be the dream. I think every Barca fan dreams of having Erling Holland at Barcelona. Okay, obviously Madrid have Mbappe, and those two guys are the best of this generation so far. It's Mbappe and Holland so far. Vini's in that conversation too, but you know everybody talks about Mbappe versus Holland. It's going to be the next Messi Ronaldo. And what the, the Ronaldo is already at Madrid. Now we just need the Messi to come to Barca. And we have the next the, the rivalry for the next 10 years that we did with Messi and Ronaldo. How dope would that be? How good would that be? Not just for, for Barca fans, but for football, man. I think Real, even Real Madrid fans will tell you they would want to see Holland at Barca because it would make the rivalry better. I would love to see Erling Holland at Barca. And I think Man City, obviously, he's, he's always competing at Man City for trophies. It's a, it's a team that's always in contention for trebles and, you know, to win the biggest trophies because while Pep is there, it is fucking Man City and he has probably the best teammates in the world around them. You know, some of the best players in the world in, in that squad with him. But is it Barcelona? No. And I'm sorry to all my Man City fans. Yes, uh, recently you've been more successful. A treble winning team, a, a UCL team, a team that's consistently making UCL finals and making it deep into the competition. And Barca have not been that club for the past couple of years. But there's something about Barcelona that's different than Man City. Uh, I mean, for players, it's really Real Madrid or Barcelona. Maybe even Man United you could throw in there. But when it comes to the clubs that you want to get to in your career, it's Real Madrid and Barcelona. And I think Holland, you know, I think he, I honestly think if you put Holland in a lie detector, he wants to go to Barca. He, he honestly does. I haven't spoken to him, but I think he wants to go to Barca. And Holland and Lamin Jamal would be, oh my God, they would break every record. That would be the greatest partnership in the history of football. Holland and Lamin Jamal. Imagine Fermin and Pedri and Gavin Holland and, and Rafinha and dude, that squad would be insane. Coached by Hansi Flick. That would be my number one choice. That would be my number one. Out of the four guys that I want to see, again, Sesko, Isak, uh, Gilkeres, they're all great. They're not Erling Holland, who is to me the best striker in the world. And, you know, this is a guy who's proven in the Premier League. He's proven in the Premier League. He's proven everywhere. He's proven in the Bundesliga. He's proven it at Salzburg. He's proven it everywhere he's been. A guy who, like I said, could have won a ball in door. Is arguably the best player in the world. Has been one of the best goals. Has been the best goal scorer in Europe for the past two seasons already. Three seasons actually. Breaks all the records. Him at Barca would be literally fucking ridiculous. I don't think we. Can, I don't like my mind can't comprehend seeing Erling Haaland in a Barca kit because I think it'd be so insane. And again, to have Mbappe, Madrid, and Haaland at Barca and to kind of continue that Messi Ronaldo type thing where the Real Madrid and Barca have the two best players in the world in their prime and they're going at it. It would be insane to me. So again. I think when you're Barca, the financial situation matters and people are going to be like, bro, you're talking out of your ass. Barca can't afford Holland. Again, I'm not talking about next summer, maybe not even the summer after that, but in the future, if this financial situation gets sorted out, which Juan Laporta is doing a good job in actually fixing it. I'm proud of you, Juan Laporta. I don't know if you're watching this video, but just know Meet Snowball on YouTube is very, very proud of you. You know, you're doing a good job. You're a good boy. Uh, I think, I don't think it's that far fetched because, again, we're not talking about Brentford here. We're not talking about uh, fucking Southampton. I'm sorry if you're a Brentford or a Southampton fan, by the way. That's really, really mean. But anyway, we're talking about FC Barcelona. The biggest club in the world, in my opinion. A club that has some of the greatest history in the game. This is where the greats play, okay? And Barcelona's number nines, okay? You've had Eto'o wear that shirt. You've had, you've had Lewandowski wear that shirt. You've had Luis Suarez wear that shirt. Two of the greatest nines in the history of football, you know? So, to carry that lineage, as if you're early on, to, to have the opportunity to carry that lineage and wear that shirt and play for Barca, to me, it's a privilege. So, rival fans can mock and say, oh my God, Barca, they don't have any money. Barca will get it sorted out. You can sell players, and again... Um, is Holland going to be expensive? Sure. But I think Joana Porta for a guy like that, I mean, this is, Nico Williams is good. He's not Erling Holland. You break, a, you break the bank for a guy like Erling Holland, who's a generational, truly generational talent. I don't think people really understand how good Erling Holland is, how, how he can go down as the greatest striker this game has ever seen. I'm not saying that lightly, by the way. I rate Luis Suarez very highly. I rate R9 very highly. I, ra I rate Robert Lewandowski very highly. I rate Karim Benzema very highly. I rate all these guys extremely highly. Erling Holland has that type of talent. So again, for me... Uh, I think Barca have to look for the striker of the future and they're keeping tabs on it clearly. They're, they're aware of that. And again, Cesco, Gilkeres, Isak are the three realistic options that I think Barca should, should maybe look for. Again, they're going to be expensive, but Barca, if not, you can go for John Duran if you want. I think he's good too. He would be next on my list. He would be number five. I'll have someone else in there. But after that, and number four, sorry, John Duran would be number four. But after that, 
the dream is hot. But yeah, you guys let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Who do you, who you want? Who do you want to see Bar be Barca striker for the foreseeable future? I love to hear it. Uh, and yeah, I love every single one of you. And I'll talk to you guys in very. very uh, talk to you. I'll see you guys uh, very soon. Peace out.